processional and stand as able for the entry of the platform party and the colors. At the conclusion of the ceremony, those in attendance are asked to please be respectful and stay seated until all students have been recognized as graduates and the platform party has recessed from the stage. Thank you for your cooperation. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the 2018 graduating class from South Dakota State University. Founded in 1881 as the state's Morrill Act land-grant institution, South Dakota State University improves quality of life through exemplary teaching, relevant research, and connected outreach. Today's graduates represent a broad range of academic disciplines, some traced to the university's earliest days, and others developed in response to the needs of the state and region. Under the leadership of Provost Dennis Hedge, faculty are led by Marshalls, Professor of Engineering Fred Delfanian, and Distinguished Professor and Assistant Department Head of Agronomy, Horticulture, and Plant Science, Douglas Mallo. PhD candidates are accompanied by their advisors. Ladies and gentlemen, if not already and are able, please stand. Under the leadership of President Barry H. Dunn, the platform party is led by Honorary Marshals Professor Fred Delfanian and Distinguished Professor of, and Assistant Department Head of Agronomy, Horticulture, and Plant Science, Douglas Mallow.
Under the leadership of Provost Dennis Hedge, faculty are led by Marshall's Pro Professor of Engineering, Fred Delfanian, and Distinguished Professor and Assistant Department Head of Agronomy, Horticulture, and Plant Science, Douglas Malo. PhD candidates were accompanied by their advisors. Barry H. Dunn, the platform party is led by Honorary Marshals Professor Fred Delfanian and Distinguished Professor and Assistant Department Head of Agronomy, Horticulture, and Plant Science, Douglas Malo. The mace, carried by Dr. Malo, signifies the authority and pageantry of academic ceremonies. Honorary Marshals lead the processional in recognition of distinguished service to the university. Joining the university in 1975 as an assistant professor of soil science, Douglas Malo was named the 1997 South Dakota Professor of the Year by the Carnegie Foundation. Malo has been honored more than 30 times, including 15 teaching awards given by his peers, student groups, SDSU, and federal agencies for his classroom effectiveness. He was awarded the prestigious USDA National Award for University Teaching Excellence in the Food and Agricultural Sciences in 1995. The annual award is given to only one person each year in the United States. He was named Distinguished Professor in 1997. Professor Fred Delfanian began his 38-year teaching career at the Department of Mechanical Engineering in 1980 after finishing his master's degree at State. After teaching for seven years, he took sabbatical to begin doctoral work at North Dakota State University. He completed his doctorate in 1995. Delfanian was advisor of the SDSU student chapter of the American Society of Mechanical Engineers student section for more than 10 years. For his contribution, he received the College of Engineering Advisor of the Year Award in 2003 and the ASME Dedicated Service Award in 2004. President Dunn, Regent Roberts, distinguished guests, members of the faculty, administrative leadership at the university, graduates, family and friends of the graduates, and ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you to the 2018 commencement ceremony of South Dakota State University, which will now be in order. Please remain standing for the presentation of colors by the Army ROTC cadets, Jessup Workman and Blake Hess, and Air Force ROTC cadets, Ben Williams, and Ethan Frazier, the Eagle Staff by Freddie Moran, and the playing of our national anthem by the Symphonic Band. Please remain standing until the colors are posted and the anthem finished.
You may be seated. Please welcome the President of South Dakota State University, Barry H. Dunn. Good afternoon, everyone. It's my privilege to serve as the 20th President of South Dakota State University and to welcome you to the university's 132nd commencement, a special day of recognition and of celebration. Thank you for coming. We are glad you are here. Today we are celebrate the completion of more than 450 graduate degrees. And earlier today, we awarded more than 2,000 undergraduate degrees for the 2017-18 academic year. This afternoon's ceremony is for students receiving the PhD degree, Doctor of Pharmacy degree, or a master's degree. As you can imagine, an event like this relies on the collaboration and efforts of a great many people. So I'd like to briefly recognize a few of them now. The ROTC ushers and color guard, associate professor of nursing, Mary Minton, and associate professor of English, Paul Baggett, who served as faculty marshals assisting the students and faculty in the processional this afternoon, and the symphonic band under, under the direction of Jacob Wallace, assistant professor of music, and Kevin Kessler, director of athletic bands. Please help me in thanking them for their contributions to this very special day. I also want to personally thank our honorary marshals who were introduced earlier, Dr. Fred Delfinian and Dr. Douglas Malo. Will you both please come forward? Please join me in recognizing them as well. It is now my pleasure to introduce those members of the platform party participating in today's ceremony who will not be introduced later in the program. I ask them to stand and be recognized. Please hold your applause until all have been introduced. Nancy Farenwald, Dean of the College of Nursing, Vice President of Student Affairs, Michaela Willis, Vice Pro Provost and Interim Dean of University College, Mary Kay Helling, Vice President of Research and Economic Development, Daniel Scholl. Chief University Librarian and Acting Dean of the Van D. and Barbara B. Fishback Honors College, Christy Tornquist. Thank you for being part of today's celebration. I would also like to recognize and thank all of the parents and friends and loved ones who are here to share this special day with today's graduates. You have provided your support and encouragement in countless ways over these past years. Members of the graduating class of 2018, please rise, please rise, the graduating class and recognize and thank your parents and friends and loved ones for their support with a round of applause. Let them know you appreciate them. Please be seated. Dr. Amy Elliott is the Chief Clinical Research Officer at Avera Health and recently started the Center for Pediatric and Community Research. Dr. Elliott received her doctorate in clinical psychology from Western Michigan University and a master's degree from North Dakota State University. Dr. Elliott has been the principal investigator of numerous large multi-site longitudinal projects focused on maternal and child health. She was the principal investigator for the United States Clinical sites for the Safe Passage Study, an international 15-year NIH-funded project focused on the role of prenatal alcohol and smoking exposures on stillbirth 
and sudden infant death syndrome. In total, Dr. Elliott has received over $63 million in external funding to support these community-based research and infrastructure building programs. In addition to this collaborative work, Dr. Elliott maintains active and productive research teams in Sioux Falls, Rapid City, and Pine Ridge, focused on improving infant and childhood health outcomes. Please help me welcome Dr. Amy Elliott. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be here today. So congratulations, graduates, family, friends, and faculty. This is a momentous occasion, and for many, this represents a significant change in direction, focus, and hopefully, socioeconomic status. When I was first asked to give this commencement address, my initial response was, what would I have to say to help inspire this tremendous group of individuals on their graduation day. Then I thought back to the commencement addresses I had attended and realized I really didn't remember any of them, so that decreased the pressure a little bit. I also realized the self-doubt and questions I was asking myself were the exact same types of insecurities I had when I was sitting where you are today. I remember looking at my diploma and wondering if they truly knew how little I actually knew. I looked around at my friends and peers and they all looked so confident and so sure of their future direction. I really wasn't. Well, my diplomas weren't taken away and my career moved forward. However, the feelings of being found out resurfaced with a vengeance towards one of the most important moments early in my career. Here's what happened, and I'm going to tell this in the hopes that it may help you someday. After my fellowship, we decided to move back home to South Dakota. Now, that certainly had not been the plan. If you had told me when I was holding that diploma that I would be moving back to South Dakota in a couple years, I would certainly have viewed that as some type of failure. I must have not gotten the job that I really wanted. The truth is, our priorities changed. We had a young daughter, and the pull of family and the familiar became very strong. We were excited to return to the Dakotas. However, I did feel like I was sacrificing some on the career front. Developing a full-time research career in South Dakota seemed like a daunting task. Shortly after returning home, I was asked to attend the Aberdeen Area Infant Mortality Review Board meeting. This was the board that reviews all infant deaths in the region. Now, I hadn't done anything in infant mortality previously, but I said yes. Early in my career, I got the advice to say yes to any work opportunity to advance your professional network and to build your professional reputation. It also helps you stand out when you take on those tasks that no one really else wants to do. Through this board, I met scientists and clinicians from Harvard, Columbia, and Stanford that had been coming to South Dakota for years, helping with infant mortality rates. Along with NIH, this group of incredible individuals were in the process of designing a large-scale study to further investigate causes of infant mortality. All who attended this meeting were invited to attend the planning meetings, so of course, I signed up. To be honest, I was so excited to be part of such a meaningful project, I was willing to do whatever work needed to earn my spot on the team. Meaningful research in infant health right here in my own backyard Maybe moving back to South Dakota wasn't such a bad professional move after all. My colleagues decided I should be the principal investigator on this large NIH grant because, quote unquote, it was time for South Dakota to start growing their own. Getting an NIH grant within a year of fellowship is almost unheard of, let alone one of this size. Well, we got the grant, and it was time for the first face-to-face -face meeting in DC. Let me paint the picture for you. The tables were set in a large U-shaped formation, and there were name cards and microphones in front of each seat. As if the environment wasn't intimidating enough, here were some of the people at the table. One was the lead author on the paper that defined sudden infant death syndrome. Another was a full professor at Harvard that created the triple risk model for infant death, a model that has now been expanded to countless other diseases and disorders. There were approximately 10 project scientists and officers from NIH and 
also an individual who was on the short list for a Nobel. And then there was me. I was six months out of fellowship, was wearing my one and only interview suit, and I had a seat at the table with a placard of my name and a microphone for all the key comments I was expected to make over the next two days. I found an image recently that captured how I felt in that moment. So picture all of these professionals sitting around the table preparing for the meeting. They were actively discussing their latest books, high impact journal publications, interesting individuals they'd have met, and then at the very far end of the table sits Big Bird. Yellow, feathery, Big Bird. The song, One of These Things is Not Like the Other, would be very fitting. And that felt, I felt like I stood out like a sore thumb, just like Big Bird. It wouldn't be long until they found out how little I knew and I felt completely out of my league. Well, over the next couple of years, the individuals in that room became family and helped me understand the important role I played in the development and execution of the study. They would talk with me before the meeting um, to go over any important issues. They would talk to me after the meeting to recap what went well and what could have went better. They mentored me and helped articulate what I did know and to ask questions about what I really didn't know. They helped me find my voice. This sense of feeling like a fraud has been named imposter syndrome. It is practically universal amongst those in higher education. I am certainly not alone. There are some who speculate this syndrome has increased in recent years with the greater emphasis on teamwork across disciplines. We are constantly working with and learning things that are outside the field we were initially trained in. It can feel like you need an MD, three PhDs, an MPH, and an MBA to be successful. You quickly find there's no way you can know everything. It's more important to know what you do know and know it well. Also, know how your colleagues and partners complement your skill sets with their own. Now, I know it's possible to have a high-powered research career right here in South Dakota. It is also possible for a girl from South Dakota to find a voice amidst Ivory League superstars. My advice is to join the committee, even when you don't know much about it. Work with people much more accomplished than you and listen to them and give the talk. It's worth the risk. When those times of insecurity still creep up, just remember, you're not alone. We've all been there. Congratulations, graduates. Thank you, Dr. Elliott, for your inspiring remarks. <laughs> Students, graduate and, graduate and professional education provides opportunities for you to be stretched and to achieve your highest potential. This potential is achieved because of guidance and mentoring of the graduate faculty. I would now ask that members of the faculty and those student affairs staff here today to, to stand and be recognized. Please join me in thanking the faculty and staff. The university takes pride in all its graduates, but faculty and administrators take special pride in those who have achieved high levels of academic excellence. I welcome to the podium Provost Dennis Hedge, who will recognize those students graduating with academic honors. Provost Hedge. Earning a degree takes hard work and commitment. A special group of graduates deserve extra recognition today. These students have reached the highest levels of academic achievement. SDSU initiates students into the National Honor Society of Phi Kappa Phi. The members are elected from every branch of the arts, sciences, humanities, and the professional colleges. Graduate students are also admitted to honor societies within their disciplines. This afternoon, we want to recognize those who have achieved this high scholastic record 
Will all of those who have been admitted to an honor society please stand and be recognized? So all admitted to an honor society. Thank you. Andy Fulberg is a 1999 graduate of South Dakota State University and president and CEO of the South Dakota State University Alumni Association. Ms. Fulberg will bring greetings to the graduates as they transition from students to alumni. Andy? Technology is amazing. Thank you, President Dunn. Good afternoon, graduates. It is an honor to be with you today and officially welcome you as you join over 90,000 individuals who have graduated from this institution. Your hard work and achievements have led you to this day, and we are very proud to have you as part of the growing alumni family. Today, you ring the bell for the yellow and blue as you enter the next phase of your life as a jackrabbit. We at the South Dakota State University Alumni Association are excited to welcome you to the alumni ranks as you join a growing list of staters who continue to lead their chosen industries and communities. This is a very special place. The people here have prepared you to do great things and we can't wait to hear about them. Congratulations again to each and every one of you on a job well done. As you walk across the stage, you will be closing a chapter of your life but at the same time, you'll be opening another. As you leave this place as a student, remember that no matter where you go, no matter what you do, you will always be a member of the South Dakota State University family. We at the Alumni Association are very proud of you and look forward to helping you stay connected to your alma mater, and we hope you will visit often. Today and forevermore, you will be Jackrabbits. Congratulations, Jackrabbits, and best of luck. Thank you, Andy. Dean of the Graduate School, Kenchel Dorner, will now introduce this year's student speaker. Kenchel? An important and traditional part of our commencement ceremonies is an opportunity for a member of the graduating class to address this gathering. I'm very pleased to introduce Shireen Williams as this year's speaker, a spring 2018 graduate in our Masters in Mass Communication program, she will offer remarks on behalf of this year's graduates. Ms. Williams is entering her 25th season covering the NFL, including more than a decade as a Dallas Cowboys beat reporter. She became the first female Pro Football Hall of Fame selector in 2007 and the first female president of the Pro Football Writers of America in 2009. In her more than 30 year career, she has covered 24 Super Bowls and seven Olympic Games. She received her BS in journalism from Texas A&M in 1986 and is a member of the A&M Journalism Hall of Honor. In 2017, she won the Blackie Sherrod Award for lifetime achievement in covering sports in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Please welcome Shireen Williams. I have a photo on the wall of my office. It's in a mosaic of an old royal typewriter. Noticeably, in the middle of the artwork is a missing piece about the size of an index card. Not surprisingly, the name of the original piece is called Writer's Block. I have spent more than 30 years as a journalist, mostly at newspapers and mainly covering the NFL and the Dallas Cowboys. In that time, I have written literally thousands of stories. And in my experience, some stories write themselves. Others take work, rewrites and edits and more rewrites and more edits, and sometimes you just never get it right, no pun intended. No matter how long you stare at the screen or swear at the screen, it just doesn't read like you want it to read. It sounds a lot like life, doesn't it? Life is like writing a story. 
When you open a Word document, you get a blank page. The blanking cursor pops up, urging you, really imploring you, to begin. This is your beginning. We're all born with a blank page and the urge to fill it with the words that will tell the uniquely epic story of our lives. Some of our stories are only 500 words with much more of life waiting to happen. Others of us have longer stories with pages and pages of words to match the years and experience that life has provided. Words like joy, pain, success, failure, love, and disappointment. You have a story, I have a story, we all have a story. I recently attended a scholarship banquet at my alma mater, Texas A&M. Representatives of the College of Liberal Arts had interviewed soon-to-be graduates asking for the first word that came to their mind to describe the completion of their degree. The wordle included words like relief, blessing, and joy. I'm sure you're experiencing many of the same words today as our graduation adds to our life stories. My word choice is honor. It's my honor today, not only to earn my degree, but to represent the online master of mass communication today and in the future. You have a story, I have a story, we all have a story. A few core components comprise a fully formed story. The first is the byline. Your byline is your name, and your name you've been given establishes ownership of the words to come. You're responsible for the content, good or bad. You also have the lead. Once upon a time, it was a dark and stormy night. It was love at first sight. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. These are all familiar leads to us. The first sentence is the most important part of a story. This is at the point when the reader decides whether it's intriguing enough or worthy enough of the reader's time to be drawn in and captured. It's what the story is about, yet only a tease. You must keep the reader wondering what comes next. It's who we are and why we were here, our purpose really. What is the lead of your story? The best story I ever wrote was about longtime football coach Phil Bennett, then the defensive coordinator at Kansas State. His wife was killed by a lightning strike in 1999 while on her daily morning jog. Wrong place, wrong time. Coach Bennett gave me a beautiful story about Nancy during an hour-long interview. In fact, the memories of his wife were so enchantingly vivid that the story wrote itself. It was one of those that I just had to move out of the way. But I needed a lead, an attention grabber, a sentence to explain what the story was about without giving away the ending, while simultaneously enticing the reader to trust me enough to want to read to the end. This was how my story began. Phil Bennett might never have married Nancy Harris if he hadn't been afraid of losing her. Nancy was an emergency room nurse at John Peter Smith Hospital in Fort Worth. Phil was an assistant football coach at Texas Christian University. They had dated for only a year, and now Nancy wanted to know whether they had a future together. I'm not ready, Phil repeatedly told her. Phil was sharing an apartment with another assistant, Dave McGinnis, who would go on to become the head coach of the Arizona Cardinals, and enjoying life as a 26-year-old bachelor. Then the young doctors at John Peter Smith began taking an interest in Nancy. Soon, over enchiladas and chalupas at the original Mexican Eats Cafe in Fort Worth, Phil popped the question. Let's go look at a ring, he said. When he bought that ring in 1982, Bennett never imagined that till death do us part would come so soon. How do you live without your wife of 15 years? How do you raise your two children without their mother? How do you continue the transient life of a football coach without the one who keeps you together? Nancy Bennett, 41, died August 28, 1999, 17 days after being struck by lightning while jogging in a new subdivision near the family home in Manhattan, Kansas. Three months later, all the homes in the middle class neighborhood are complete. But how do you rebuild a life? You have a story, I have a story, we all have a story. I have been blessed to cover 24 Super Bowls and seven Olympic Games. In Beijing in 2008, the 14-hour time difference made many of my stories old news by the time my audience began reading. It was a challenge to write in journalism what we like to call a second-day lead. 
Jeremy Warner was seeking to become only the second man ever to repeat in the 400 meter dash at the Olympics. His hometown of Arlington, Texas is where I live, so I'd gotten close to his family. I asked Jeremy's father, Danny, if I could sit with the family during the race, and as luck would have it, they had an extra seat. This is what I wrote. Jeremy Warner turned the corner on the home stretch and found exactly what he needed. 15 of his closest friends and family stood cheering him. His hero's welcome came in an empty concourse of National Stadium nearly two hours after he finished a disappointing second to teammate and rival LaShawn Merritt in the 400 meter dash. Well, his mother Linda Warner asked, can we see it? Warner dug deep into the pocket of his Team USA sweatpants and pulled out his silver medal. It is not what he came here for, but everyone still wanted to touch it, hold it, and take pictures with it. We expect so much of him, his high school coach Mike Nelson said, I think we forget that this is the Olympic Games and he just won the silver medal. You have a story, I have a story, we all have a story. Just like in writing, in life we have a lead and a conclusion. Our lives contain transitions, conjunctions, metaphors, and irony. Life is filled with exclamation points, a lot of those we hope, periods and question marks, vivid details and description. We use the backspace and the delete button. Sometimes we hit control alt delete to restart. Sometimes we save and sometimes we trash. We are all authors of our own story. How is your life story going to read? Thank you, Shireen. That was an incredible speech. I am, a, I am pleased to invite the Honorable Pam Roberts of the South Dakota Board of Regents to the podium to authorize the conferral of degrees. Regent Roberts. Good evening. It's an honor for me to join you and greet you on behalf of the South Dakota Board of Regents. We join your families and friends today in commending and congratulating you on your hard work in earning this graduate degree. By the authority vested in me as a member of the South Dakota Board of Regents, I hereby authorize Dr. Barry Dunn, President of the South Dakota State University, to award the degrees as recommended. My best wishes to you all. Thank you, Regent Roberts. The candidates for the Doctor of Philosophy degrees will be presented by the President of the Faculty Senate, Associate Professor Dr. Jose Gonzalez Hernandez. Jose? Will the candidates please stand? That's you guys, please. The highest earned academic degree is that of Doctor of Philosophy. Generally, five years beyond the bachelor's degree is necessary to complete the PhD requirements. Formal coursework and seminars are part of this degree. And in addition, the successful candidates extend the limits of the knowledge of society by presenting the results of original research that has stood the test of the academic superiors. President Dunn, we have 32 candidates in attendance who have accomplished this and have satisfied the graduate faculty that they are worthy recipients of this degree. The titles of the research are printed in the programs. I take great pleasure in presenting these individuals so that you may confer upon them the degree Doctor of Philosophy. Thank you, Dr. Gonzalez. By virtue of the authority delegated to me by the Regents of Higher Education of the State of South Dakota, I confer upon you the degree Doctor of Philosophy with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. Will the candidates please proceed to the stage accompanied by their major advisors? The candidates will be announced by Dr. Jen Anderson, Assistant Professor of Communication Studies, and hooded by Dean Dorner and their major advisor.
Dr. Salem Abdul Karim. Electrical Engineering Advisor, Dr. Shishuan Shao. Dr. John Apraku from Chemistry, Major Advisor, Dr. Fatih Halavaish. Thank you. Dr. Sarah El Ghazwi, Major Biochemistry, Advisor, Dr. Fatih Halavaish. Dr. Valerie Barris, major in Computational Science and Statistics. Advisor, Dr. Zhizhen Gi. Dr. Don Bowes, major Nursing. Advisor, Dr. Kay Boland. Today she's being hooded by Dr. Cynthia Elverson. Dr. Abdullah Budaka, major in civil engineering. Advisor, Dr. Mostafa Tazar. Okay. Dr. Shuyan Cheng, in agricultural biosystems and mechanical engineering. Major advisor, Dr. Lin Wei. Dr. Francis Duomo, with a major in geospatial science and engineering. Advisor, Dr. Michael Wimberly. Dr. Brandy Feltz, a major in wildlife and fishery sciences, with an advisor, Dr. Jonathan Jenks. Dr. Eli Feltz, a major in wildlife and fishery sciences, and advisor, Dr. Brian Grave. Dr. Jamie Gibbons, a major in biological sciences, with advisor, Dr. Ron Bao Zhu. Dr. Yeyan Shi, major in biological sciences, and advisor, Dr. Ran Bao Zhu. Thank you. Dr. Tom Kasiga, a major in wildlife and fishery sciences, advisor, Dr. Michael Brown. Dr. Stacy Lindblom Dries, major in plant science. Advisor, Dr. Carl Glover. Okay, thank you. Dr. Michael Lynch, major in sociology. And advisor, Dr. Julie Yingling. Dr. Erica Manandar, Major Chemistry. Advisor, Dr. Brian Logue. Dr. Frederick Ochin, Major Chemistry. Advisor, Dr. Brian Logue. Dr. Hector Menendez III, Major Biological Sciences. Advisor, Dr. Melissa Wallner. Dr. Adam McDermid, Major Computational Science and Statistics. Advisors, Dr. Q Ma and Dr. Ann Fennell.
Dr. Shade Martin, Major in Nutrition and Exercise Science, Advisor, Dr. Lacey McCormack. Dr. Sumaduri Pamarti, Major, Nutrition and Exercise Science, Advisor, Dr. Lacey McCormack. Dr. Esther Mosase, and Major, Civil Engineering, Advisor, Dr. Laurent Ahibamle. Dr. Jitanjale Nanda Kafle, Major, Biological Sciences. Advisor, Dr. Volker Brozel. Thank you. Dr. George Opoku Kusi, Major, Biochemistry. Advisor, Dr. Adam Hoppe. Dr. Mandy Orth, Major in Wildlife and Fishery Sciences, Advisor, Dr. Kent Jensen. Dr. Bremansu Osa Andrews, Major, Biochemistry, and Advisor, Dr. Surjaj Am Iram. Dr. Wirat Pipatpong Pinyo, Major Plant Science, Advisor, Dr. Xingzhu Gu. Thanks. Dr. Joseph Robertson, a major in Computational Science and Statistics, Advisor, Dr. Gary Hatfield. Dr. Carla Rodriguez Hernandez, Major in Biological Sciences, Advisor Jill Anderson. Thanks. Dr. Jeffrey Vincent, Major in Biological Sciences, Advisor Dr. Michael Hildreth. Dr. Megan Webb in Animal Science. Major Advisor, Dr. Amanda Blair. Dr. Ruth Wank, Major Sociology. Advisor, Dr. Meredith Redlin. We will now award the Doctor of Pharmacy degrees. 
the Regents of Education of the State of South Dakota have authorized South Dakota State University to offer studies leading to the professional degree of Doctor of Pharmacy. Dean Jane G Mort will, of the College of Pharmacy and Allied Health Professions will present the candidates for the degree. Will the candidates for the professional degree of Doctor of Pharmacy please stand? Pres President Dunn, these students have completed six years of intensive professional education and are well prepared to use their knowledge and expertise to deliver pharmaceutical care for the benefit of their patients in the state and nation. These individuals were awarded their hoods at a special ceremony last night. I take pleasure in presenting them in order that you may confer upon them the degree Doctor of Pharmacy. By the virtue of the authority delegated to me by the Regents of Education of the State of South Dakota, I confer upon each of you the degree Doctor of Pharmacy with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. Will those who have earned this degree present themselves to the stage for recognition? Dr. Avery Aldridge. Dr. Janelle Anderson. Dr. Al Alexandra Anzai. Dr. Kara Benson. Dr. Alex Bessie. Dr. Kristen Binger. Dr. Benjamin Paul Bolinski. Dr. Jamie Brooks. Dr. Sarah Calhoun. Dr. Nicole Carr. Dr. Fang Chen. Dr. Megan Dorsey. Dr. Amy Dufour. Dr. Heath Eisens. Dr. Shelby Eisens. Dr. Kendra Ernst. Dr. Whitney Eistad. Dr. Jonathan Feist. Dr. Matthew Gibbons. Dr. Casey Goodhart. Dr. Keel Grant. Dr. Aaron Gullickson. Dr. Tegan Gustafson. Dr. Christina Hansen. Dr. Austin Hogston. Dr. Andrea Hegland. Dr. Rick Hyman. Dr. Kelsey Heiser. Dr. Morgan Hemmingson. Dr. Casey Hedinger. Dr. Vanessa Hinkle. Dr. Elizabeth Hodges. Dr. Jaris Hovey McBride. Dr. Christina Hui. Dr. Gina Johansson. Dr. Jack Kerner. Dr. Elizabeth Klein. Dr. Katie Kurth. Dr. Spencer Kurtz. Dr. Kayla Kurtzwig. Dr. Lauren Kuschel. Dr. Jade Kutsky. Dr. Alyssa Larson. Dr. Cassidy Latuskic. 
Dr. April Lick. Dr. Morgan Mathieu. Dr. Shannon Miller. Dr. Allison Mitchell. Dr. Keaton Moffitt. Dr. Zachary Mullen. Dr. Elizabeth Murray. Dr. Alex Olson. Dr. Maggie Orn. Dr. Emma Pashong. Dr. Ashley Ryerson. Dr. Connor Rumpe Rumsey. Dr. Nicole Schaberg. Dr. Megan Schlins. Dr. Kristen Schrader. Dr. Nathan Smith. Dr. Trace Steckler. Dr. Claire Steffen. Dr. Nicole Stencil. Dr. Kayla Struck. Dr. Nathan Sutera. Dr. Mariah Taylor. Dr. Crystal Van Iperen. Dr. Pa Paige Wheeldryer. Dr. Joshua Weinberg. Dr. Lauren Wildey. Dr. Shelby Young. And Dr. Aaron Ziski. Thank you, Dr. Mort. We will now award master's degrees. South Dakota State University offers graduate studies leading to the Master's of Art, Master of Education, Master of Mass Communication, Master of Architecture, Master of Public Health, Master of Engineering, and Master of Science degrees. Will the candidates for the master's degrees please stand? By virtue of the authority delegated to me by the Regents of Higher Education of the State of South Dakota, I confer upon each of you the appropriate master's degrees with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. The dean of each college will present the candidates nominated for the master degrees. Dean John Killifer will introduce master graduates from the College of Agriculture and Biological Sciences. The rest of you may be seated. Will those who are candidates for these degrees please present themselves to the stage for recognition. President Dunn, upon satisfactory completion of the graduate faculty requirements in the College of Agriculture and Biological Sciences for their respective degrees, these candidates will have demonstrated competency to serve society in their chosen fields. Nabila Alshalibli. Christopher Angerhofer. 
Pawan Basnet. Merritt Birch. Matthew Carpenter. Alejandro Casella. Sarah Colombe. Sophia Consimius. Tanve Deshpande. Andrew Borsma. Tyler Garwood. Ryan Golden. Joshua Harvey. Joshua Johnson. Pratishka Kanal. Jennifer Lutze. Sarah Mayes. Matthew McKillop. Pauline Mochama. Ron Aldwin Navales. Jamie Ortman. Louise Monga. Kabita Pandey. Emily Petzel. Sai Mukund Ramakrishnan. Theodore Moore. Sonia Rodriguez Jimenez. Emily Rosenthal. Grady Rubel. Natasha Sherber. Iman Chico. Amy Steffen. Matthew Tripp. Vishal Seth. Stephanie Wooten. Casey Zangaro. Muhammad Ali Surya. Thank you, Dr. Killifer. Interim Dean Jason Zimmerman will introduce graduates from the College of Arts and Sciences. Will those who are candidates for these degrees please present themselves to the stage for recognition. President Dunn, upon satisfactory completion of the graduate faculty requirements in the College of Arts and Sciences for their respective degrees, these candidates will have demonstrated competency to serve society in their chosen fields. Caitlin Abramson. Elaf Azrani. Mona Asharamrani. Heather Bertram. Matthew Bowen. Austin Brinjulson. Jenna Christensen. Justin Davis. Iman Ibadi Pakisabi. Okay. Semahar Geberkidin. Anthony Gorder. John Green. Manik Gudimani. Shimara Gunawadana. 
Joshua Hartelt. Teresa Hebert. Shireen Williams. Sherry Ann Hermes. Brett Holt. Abdal Nasser Hassan. Jeffrey Irwin. Sharice Ivy. Nusrat Jahan. Sarah Manning. Kiana Margison. Cesar Marin Rodriguez. Jessica McLean. Jared Nurnberger. Nora Beverly Orena. Levi Phil. Ashley Pickell. Franklin Robertson. Dean Steyer. Kendall Yurick. Jaron Von Duke. Ashley Wolf. Quadri Yusuf. Rochelle Zenz. Thank you, Dr. Zimmerman. Dean Jill Thorngren will introduce graduates from the College of Education and Human Sciences. Will those who are candidates for these degrees please present themselves to the stage for recognition. President Dunn, upon satisfactory completion of the graduate faculty requirements in the College of Education and Human Sciences for their respective degrees, these candidates will have demonstrated competency to serve society in their chosen fields. Melissa Anderson. Brianna Oshwer. Kelsey Bailey. Courtney Ballard. Karen Barsness. Ashley Bashen. Nancy Bell. Brianna Bolstead. Tyler Bolstead. Tanya Christensen. Sarah Darnall. Scott Delores. Annalise Duffy. Dana Felderman. Katie Fountain. Gina Fritz. Stephanie Fritz. Amber Gaspar. Carol Gibbon. Kayla Goose. Margaret Gould. Tyler Hagen. Andrea Hansen. Shanna Harming. Misty Hildenbrand. Wiyaka, his horse is thunder. 
Molly Hublo. Megan Irvine Miller. Connie Johnson. Kaylee Karski. Holly Kelly. Natalie Kephart Gould. Robin Kaiser. Joshua Kirchner. Christy Cole. Brooke Nelson. Elizabeth Nelson. Jenna Nelson. Dorianne Peso. Emily Paul. Denise Reed. Shannon Renkley. Mary Robertson. Paula Pettigrew. Jordan Robin. Mary Radebush. Samantha Salafe. Brandy Schmidt. Mary, Mary Steinmetz. Krista Schilbach. Cassandra Scholl. Josie Seiberg. Amber Shocker. Crosby Skipper. Shelby Summer. Mackenzie Timmons. Derek Tolbert. Nicole Van Heek. Zhuzhuan Wan. Austin Westland. Bobby Jordan White. Francesca Willard. And Dalton Williams. Thank you, Dr. Thorngren. Dean Brown will now introduce the graduates from the Jerome J. Lohr College of Engineering. Okay. Will those who are candidates for these degrees please present themselves to the stage for recognition? President Dunn, upon satisfactory completion of the graduate requirements in the Jerome J. Lohr College of Engineering for their respective degrees, these candidates will have demonstrated competency to solve some of our most challenging problems in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Rakesh Roshan Ade. Archibald Amoako. Loretta Amon Otapo. Nicholas Ahrens. Damon Bayer. Abdullah Almantashari. Darren Beck. Vibhansh Bidua. Salvador Caballero. Radhika Chakravarti. Oliver Chang. Jerome Charles. 
Beatriz D'Souza. Chidubem and Yekweke. Derek Friend. Varun Kumar Gadipudi. Peter Gyedu. Vinyaj Kumar Kala. Jesse Hendricks. Luis Duke. Yazen Hindea. Anna Howard. Sahadul Islam. Supriya Sampat Jadav. Rohit Jain. Harsh Jani. Jun Jang. Japrakash Kanagaraj. Prabin Katel. Abdul Aziz Kuanda. Arwa Makbol. Gukul Mayuram. Keely McConkey. Mukesh Mehta. Jin Yong Moon. <laughs> Timetope Odaleye. Lydia Osa Andrews. Ramya Mitra Patnam Damodaram. Joshua Peterson. Jarna Pokrel. Ashik Sahani. Suti Sanyi. Suraya Akhtar. Saihan Su. Wisdom Takuma. Max Sauer. Eric Stratman. Utsav Tapa. Monica Velakoruti. Taylor Waite. Brennan Wally. Shihan Wu. Yunfang Zhang. Asma Alufi. Atul Mamun. Mohammed Tahiri. Thank you, Dean Brown. Dean Jane Mort will introduce the graduate from the College of Pharmacy and Allied Health Professions. Will the candidate for the public Masters of Public Health please present yourself to the stage for recognition. President Dunn, this graduate has completed all the requirements to serve as a public health administrator, practitioner, researcher, and leader who can address the public health needs of America and beyond. Kaylee Raggett. As part of the true Jackrabbit celebration, please join the symphonic band in the playing of Yellow and Blue, South Dakota State's alma mater, and Ring the Bell, our fight song. Words can be found on page 50 of your program. 
Please remain standing until the stage party has recessed and the colors are retired. Now we've come to the central moment in these ceremonies. Audience, please stand and join me in congratulating these new graduates. Thank you all for coming this afternoon. It's been a real pleasure for me to preside at this 132nd commencement celebration. Graduates, you have now earned your degree. You have realized your dream. Let your imagination lead you to a bright and wonderful future, and may your time as a jackrabbit serve you well on your road ahead. Congratulations. The 2018 commencement cere ceremony for South Dakota State University is now adjourned but please remain standing as the colors are retired.